In this movie, we're going to cover simple date-time functions. Continuing along using report 3, let's create a new field called date formula 2. Now we can see it in, of course, in our field list. This is a user-defined field. And let's come over to our function section. Notice we have a couple options when dealing with dates. We have a date and time section and a date range section. These date ranges come in handy. These are Crystal's own predefined calculations and formulas. These can come in handy so if you can use them. You also have your standard date and time functions. Now it's important to realize dates follow their own rules and those rules are partially based on how your database treats dates or if it is a date time. The difference between date and date time is simple. There's a time stamp at the end of the date time. However, that can stop you from doing a few things. A lot of people don't like to see the date time. They just want to see the date. And that's the case. This is easy enough. Go ahead and click on this. Either double click or drag it down into the workshop area. This is where you can type in whatever you want. You could easily just have typed this in and it would have appeared the same. Notice my cursor's between the two parentheses, meaning that function, notice it's in blue, is going to affect the field that I pull into it. Now you can either pull database fields or user defined fields. It's up to you. In this case, we're going to pull in the rev date. I drag it in and make sure it's between those two parentheses. Now a good thing to do is always check, especially if you like to type in your formulas. Since my typing is, well, I really can't call it typing as opposed to pecking, I tend to make a lot of mistakes. But I always hit the check button and Crystal checks the syntax for me. Now, Crystal Reports Check will check the syntax of the formula, but it won't tell you if a value from a data should be X when it should be Y or Z or XY. It doesn't catch data entry error. It only checks your syntax. Make sure that you're pulling in the right function, that the it's not a string or it's not a numeric, and in this case it has to be a date. So when it says error check, it's kind of, in general, speaking to only the formula that you're using at the time. Let's go ahead and save and close this. Now from here, I can drag my date formula 2 onto the report. Then I'm going to go ahead and extend this a little bit box so we can see it a little bit better. And then I'm going to scroll over and click on the rev date field, the original one that we pull onto our report. Now it's a date time. And I'm going to pull it down here. And if I pull this over, I can now compare the two. Notice how my formula field is a simple date in parentheses. It doesn't have the date time stamp at the end. If you don't modify this, Crystal will default to its own database read, meaning it'll reflect what the database reflects. Another way to change this is if you felt like it was simply to format the field and choose one of the shorter defaults. But that doesn't always help you. Based on your export options and if you're passing this Crystal report to someone else, Crystal will, of course, apply its own settings based on their setup. The formula field helps because no matter what setup they choose, it's always going to be a date as you define it. Let's talk about a few more options with your date time field. Right click on that field, right in preview, and go to edit formula. This brings up, of course, our window again. Let's go to our date and time functions. The parentheses I'm going to keep, but I'm going to replace this. If I type in year, for example, notice the word turns blue. That means it's a keyword recognized by the crystal syntax, meaning it has a special function. Now if I just choose year in the revenue transaction rev date field, I'm saying transform this function into something else. Let's go ahead and save and close. Notice now the field that I was working with is eight now a number as opposed to a date or date and time. This is a mild conversion, but a lot of people would just like to see a summary by year and this is an easy way to do it. You can format this field of course like so. That way it gets rid of any commas or decimals because really decimals and years don't really mix. Another function you'll have is to edit the formula. Instead of year, you can choose month and save and close. This will pull in the month. In this case, we look at the original rev date, it's 12 and it'll just pull in month. So if you need to see anything by month, you can now pull that in as a group. Adding and subtracting dates can also be very tricky, so I'm going to show you one more thing. I'm going to have to leave it to you to experiment a little bit, but as far as basics goes, I can show you the next logical step. I can now derive year, month, I can change a date time to a simple date, but what if you needed to add or subtract dates? 
I'm going to go ahead and remove month and leave the parentheses. In this case, I'm going to subtract. And I'm going to scroll up. And one of the first options I have is the current date time. This is a default value. I'm going to go ahead and drag this on the report behind the minus sign. Now in this case, minus, because it doesn't come in quotes, doesn't act like it did with the string. This is actually a function saying, take the revenue date minus the current date. Now by default, Crystal will express this in days. If you need to express it in something else, then you need to use a special formula. But I'll leave that to you to experiment on this test database on your own. We check our formula. Crystal says it's OK. You can also add date and time, but sometimes it doesn't always make sense. And I hit Save and Close. Notice what I get. Now this field, still a number, is expressed as negative, in parentheses, 2,151. That means since this date here, it has been 2,151 days since this sale date. There are many, many date fields to go through and kind of play around with, and sometimes people need things broken out weekly, monthly, bi-monthly. I suggest you spend a little bit of time just playing with the date fields and watching what happens as you change your formulas. Also, if you run into errors, that's where you learn the most. You can also troubleshoot those. Most of the time, though, if you hit that check button, Crystal will at least alert you the fact there's an error, even though sometimes it won't tell you exactly how to fix it. Custom formulas are tricky that way. They're assuming that the user knows exactly what they want, exactly what they're doing. Speaking from experience, sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes it's mere experimentation. Either way, Crystal will let you experiment to your heart's content, but it will stop you if it can't complete a function.